hello, welcome to Diecast Restos. I'm Jason and this is a Lesney Matchbox Superfast 12F Citroen CX. It entered the Superfast series in 1979 and transcended Lesney's 1982 bankruptcy, eventually leaving in 1985. This yellow version was a 1982 rest of world, i.e. non-US release. This one is in a grotty state, so I'm going to restore it to the same spec just with some basic trim application to emphasise the features of what is, in my opinion, an excellent casting. Here's one in mint condition. And this is a real Citroen CX, brake as it was known in France, Safari here in the UK. The CX began production in 1974, with the estate version following in 1975. The brake was 10 inches or 25 centimetres longer than the regular CX, increasing the load capacity significantly. Citroen also offered the Familial CX, with three rows of seats seating seven. The CX was designed as a replacement for the then 20-year-old Day S. If you're interested, I restored Lesney's 1959-66A Day S a while back, where I talk about the car's innovation. Continuing that innovation, the CX utilised Citroen's now famous hydro-pneumatic suspension. Having restyled the Day S, Robert Opron was tasked with designing the CX, following on from the SM he had headed up in 1970. The CX takes its name from the aerodynamic symbol for drag coefficient. The CX borrowed the Duravi power steering system first introduced on the SM. It interestingly did not have self-cancelling turn signals. Citroen believed that this should be a conscious decision of the driver. However, power steering was not fitted on the earliest models as the car was rushed to market. The steering in these examples was heavy and it was difficult to drive. It was also originally designed to house a rotary engine by Komota, but due to the economy of the unit, the three rotor engine was scrapped. The CX was powered by a range of four cylinder engines instead. Production of the CX was at a new facility built by Citroen to the north of Paris, but this investment was ultimately one of the contributory factors in Citroen's financial demise and competitor Peugeot's takeover. That takeover occurred in 1976. The new PSA Peugeot Citroen parent company now had three executive cars amongst its lineup the Peugeot 604, which was a slow seller, the Talbo Tagora, and the CX. Development of the CX was not deemed a priority. It gained a reputation for high running costs, which would have an effect on sales. Quality was also a serious issue, with components lacking in several departments, such as the steel frame, starter motor, door hinges, and most commonly, the electrics. With the design now 11 years old, in 1985, the Series 2 CX had a minor update and facelift and provided Citroen with a temporary bump in sales. However, this did not last. The CX Saloon was replaced by the XM in 1989, while the estate continued until 1991, when the XM estate followed. Now here I have painted the shell of my CX brake in yellow, near enough identical to its original look. I don't think many CX would have been bought in bright yellow when first released, or if it was even offered as an option. The predecessor was a pale metallic blue, which had been produced by Lesney between 1979 and 1981. After the 1982 yellow release, it left the 1-75 range, but remained in yellow in the 2-pack series. These came with a tampo across the bonnet, and a trailer carrying three plastic motorcycles. I've tried using my heat gun here in an attempt to revitalise the yellow of the plastic, but to little success. I'm also going to see how I can remove some of the yellowing of the window piece, as that is badly discoloured. The CX did remain in the 1-75 series in 1983, but it was redressed as an ambulance. The rear windows were filled in, with decals applied across them, while the roof had holes cut in it to allow two beacons to poke through. This then left the core lineup after 1983, but again continued in the Twin Pack series with Police Marine Division decals and a trailer carrying a boat through until 1987. So I haven't gone too wild with the detailing, just some chrome trim for the base, similar to the real car's bumpers, and for the headlights. On the body though, I've given it chrome door handles, 
a base for the tail lights, a black plastic door guard, a black grille on the front and up on the hood, some markings on the D pillar, and now I'm adding in the colour for the turn signals and brake lights. So polishing hasn't done enough for my yellowed windscreen. It's new technique time, for me at least, utilising the hydrogen peroxide and sunlight method. I pour some on and leave it on a windowsill. Three days later. It seems to have worked pretty well. Not perfect, but a marked improvement. So I polish it again using my tried and tested methods to remove any leftover blemishes. But once the windows have been polished with Autosol and then dunked in Astonish Polish, it's time to finalise this build with some Citadel Gloss. This is applied to all the existing casting lines to give a greater depth perception and also across the headlights to really help give them a realistic sheen. There are plenty of areas to coat on this casting, with the rear wheel cover spats to consider too. I also coat over any areas I've coloured in with the black marker. And once the bodywork has been finished, I move on to the turn signals and headlights connected to the base. Then to begin reassembly, I fit my restored wheels and then I can push the suspension piece over the top to keep them in place. But here are the rest of the restored and improved parts. I first place in the marginally improved rear hatch. This is held in situ by the less yellow window piece. After that comes the cleaned interior with its corrected towing hook. And finally the base, which clicks down over the two rear posts. And the front is secured with an M2 screw. So this is how my shabby Citroen looked. The paintwork had been battered from all directions. The window piece was cloudy and turned out to have significantly yellowed as well. The wheels had lost their trim and it had a dirty interior thanks to the open rear hatch. Speaking of that hatch, the yellow plastic looked quite faded and that rear tow hook was bent almost flat. But this Resto Plus has turned the Citroen from shabby to chic. Here we have our like new but better Citroen CX brake from 1982. The yellow colour is near identical to the original colour but it benefits from some exterior detailing that will help improve the look. The Citadel gloss improves the lines, while the touches of marker add extra detail to the cast elements, such as the door guards. The plastic rear hatch has improved a little under the heat of my heat gun, but what has improved most of all is the window piece. Not perfect, but much clearer than before. The front end of the base detailing really improves the otherwise flat black appearance. I also like how, with the wheel trim having been reapplied, it gives the car a tall stance, like the suspension is in its raised position. If you want to see more Restoration Plus attempts, drop the video a like and leave a comment. Be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't yet. But all that leaves me to say is thanks for watching and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.